Welcome to a fresh episode on this segment on Daybreak Africa. I am Angela Daku, your host as usual. And today's topic will be based on hepatitis, which is an infectious disease known as a silent killer. Well, I have a medical officer here with me today from the University of Medical Sciences, Ondo, who is going to take us through this discourse in person of Aina Taye. You're welcome to the program, sir. You're welcome. Yes, sir. Thank you, sir, for the um, opportunity. First of all, I would like you to explain in layman's language what hepatitis is all about. Hepatitis is a disease of the liver. It happens when the liver comes in contact with a foreign object. So the body now tries to remove that foreign object. At the process of removing that foreign object, the liver gets destroyed. So that is, uh, that is basically what hepatitis is. All right, you mentioned a foreign body. What foreign body are you talking about? Um, the foreign bodies or objects can be, they can be infectious or non-infectious objects. Like, for example, infectious, we have uh, different types of viruses, like hepatitis A, B, C, D, E. Then the, the non-infectious causes are alcohol, they can be toxins, like some drugs, like uh, paracetamol, and few others, or ABBA concussions. And also, there is one classification uh, called the uh, autoimmune, that is when the body sees the liver as a foreign object as a, as a whole, and then uh, decides to attack the liver. But there are other things that can cause that, which I won't be able to go through right, right now. Okay, um, I want to ask, what kind of situation will prompt the liver to be like a foreign body? Um, in, in terms of maybe a liver transplant, it's possible. Uh, maybe there can be some infection or a drug that the body sees as a, as a foreign object. And, try, and the liver can have a, simil a similar makeup with that drug. For example, so the body now tries to remove that drug with the liver. I'm just citing that as an example. So that is uh, how autoimmunity works in terms of liver, uh, liver affect from that, from that point. You actually made mention of paracetamol and actually from research uh, you discovered they say paracetamol can also uh, cause implications to the liver. So how is this? Because if you look at paracetamol, paracetamol is a normal uh, drug that everybody tends to take even without prescription. Yes, um, so it said that at, uh, at about 10 grams, or that is uh, probably about 20, about 20 tablets, can, can have a toxic effect on the liver. It directly affects the hepatocytes. So uh, and also, it can also be it can also be toxic also at normal doses. For example, the normal one we take two tablets and stuff. But it, uh, it now in that case it depends on the condition of the of the person taking it. Maybe the person already have a, a end stage liver disease, or the person is a chronic alcoholic. In this case, small number of uh, paracetamol can have a significant effect on the liver in terms of uh, uh, intoxication. You made mention of um, the categories of hepatitis. Can you briefly touch them? Yes, uh, there are a few categories, but I will mention two. I have mentioned one, infectious, non-infectious causes. The infectious ones are the hepatitis A to E. The non-infectious ones are from the autoimmune toxins, uh, alcohol. And also, it can also be categorized in terms of uh, duration of illness. It can be acute if the infection clears within six months. But if it doesn't clear within six months, it will be classified or categorized as chronic. All right. You mentioned also hepatitis A, B, C, D, and E. So what is the difference between each of these ones? Uh, the viruses are different. They, uh, the, there are some classifications of viruses in terms of taxonomy and stuff. So they are different in terms of uh, taxonomy. And also the routes of transmissions are different. 
for example in A and E they they are transmitted usually through uh, infected food or water but the rest are transmitted through blood contact like maybe from sharps uh, use of uh, needle sharing of needles among drug users uh, it can be transmitted from mother to child we call it mother to try uh, mother to child transmission and um, yeah those are the differences just like you just you mentioned uh, mother to child transmission if it had uh, in a situation whereby the mother just discovers it probably still at the early stage can, is there any possibility that the child will not be affected? Um, all these things have percentages. Uh, it's not every it's not every fetus that gets infected with uh, with the virus from the mother, but a, uh, a significant percentage of them gets infected. Yeah, so it's not all of them that gets, but some are unlucky and they get infected. Although from research as well, you discover that hepatitis B is the most concerned uh, or talked about aspect of hepatitis. Why is this? Because uh, it's, it's more common and it is, uh, it's, more, uh, it's, it's the most research done in terms of, uh, in terms of treatment and uh, it's... Uh, uh, so can I go back on that question? Uh, about that, I don't have. A, I actually don't know why hepatitis B is most talked about. But uh, okay, my answer to that would be I. I don't know if hepatitis B is the most talked about, or is the most common. Hepatitis C is also common. At least from from my own experience, I've. I've, although I can say I've seen more of hepatitis B than C, but hepatitis C is also quite very common. Why is the disease referred to as a silent killer? Okay, uh, a silent killer, it's, a, I, I, uh, it's, it can be referred as a silent killer among some specific group of people. That is, uh, those people who have the chronic infection. People who have chronic infections, most of them don't have uh, symptoms. There are no signs of it during the early stages. So they just go about infecting others and they themselves, the liver is being gradually destroyed without any sign. So the uh, people who present with chronic infections, they usually come when the liver have already been severely affected or the, the, the liver cannot compensate anymore. So that is why it is referred to as a silent killer. Because at that stage when it is being discovered uh, the liver have already been seriously affected and destroyed. All right. Can you tell us about the nature of the virus in respect to the effects on the body? The virus is a is a very small it's one of the smallest uh, viruses, very small. In respect to the body, it has affinity to the liver because the liver cells has some, it has some things outside the cell, inside the cell that attracts them to the liver. They, they multiply or replicate in the liver cells, which is, I think it's not possible for them to do that in other, in other organs of the body. So they have great affinity for, for the liver. They replicate there and they multiply there. Oh, all right, looking at how dangerous this uh, disease is, can it be also uh, seen as deadly? Yes, it can be seen as deadly, but also in some specific group of people. Which means it can be managed? Yes. Although can it be cured? Some can be cured. Okay. Some cannot be cured. All right. Why is hepatitis not fully known to the public, even with the fact that it is a dangerous disease? I think there is a, there is lack of awareness. Um, usually, um, people um, can I go back on that? 
uh, I think there is lack of awareness. Uh, I've seen a lot of, uh, like for example, HIV, I have HIV day. It's a very popular day. People go on the street and create awareness. Um, chronic kidney disease, they have their days. But I've not heard about hepatitis having a, having a day dedicated to it and people are, uh, people are uh, trying to get away of it. But, but it, uh, it deserves uh, awareness, like significant awareness, because it's, it's very common. It is said that uh, about one third of the population uh, have been affected with that virus, with hepatitis virus, at some point in their lifetime. So it's a very significant virus. It is even, you know, it's said to be to be 100 times more infective than HIV. All right. Looking at um, our country today, Nigeria, you discover that so many people once they fall ill, they tend to just go to the pharmacist or chemist nearby and then get drugs for themselves, which is self-medication. Do you think this as well plays a role in getting infected? I don't think it plays a role in getting infected, but it can play a role in in uh, in other causes of hepatitis in terms of toxins or activation of some autoimmunity because there are some drugs that are very toxic to the liver um, usually before before we prescribe a medication we ask patients different questions to know that a particular to, you know, to for investigations and to know to know for future purposes if we want to give some drugs what drugs are we able to give this patient or not so People going over the counter to request for medications without a um, doctor's prescription are at high risk of um, taking drugs that are very toxic to the liver and there are other organs also that can be destroyed from inappropriate use of, of drugs. So how do we avoid getting ex um, con uh, more like how do we avoid getting in contact with hepatitis? Um, but by the infected and uninfected um, category? From the infected route, uh, the means of, uh, of uh, prevention uh, mostly is uh, barrier contact. In terms of uh, during sexual uh, contact, you use condom. Condom is said to be preventive uh, or abstainers or single partner who you know the status of that person uh, in terms of uh, the viruses and the uh, avoidance of uh, sharing of uh, sharps, uh, sharp objects. Uh, drug users uh, should uh, be rehabilitated to avoid sharing needles. Uh, pregnant women should be, should be regularly tested for it to prevent mother-to-child transmission. Then in terms of uh, other uh, categories, uh, consumption of alcohol at a minimum or recommended uh, dosage or volume, and uh, uh, diet, good diet, loss of weight, because uh, fat can also cause hepatitis, uh, having a, a healthy weight. and. Uh, not taking over the counter medications, the medications to be from even if it's the common paracetamol, it should be doctors prescribed, and uh, use of uh, use of uh, upper concussion is a common practice here in Africa. It, it should be discouraged. Totally. Totally, yes. Why is that? Totally. Because these upper concussions are. They, they are the most of those uh, most of most of them are they are soaked in concentrated alcohols and uh, mixtures of many of many trees or backs of trees or leaves. The, the combination of them can be you know it can be uh, overwhelming for for the body to detoxify it. So uh, it should it should really really be discouraged, and it's 
some of them has benefits so i'm not saying some of them doesn't have benefits but uh, even if you want to you can research on it and know okay is this app is it good for me or not but you know this this is our coin that they, you know that people hawk on the street you don't know where they come from yeah you don't know where they come from they are very are very toxic to to the body not only to the liver well as regards the awareness of the danger of hepatitis to the public how do you think the government can play a role um, the government can play a role by by funding awarenesses uh, billboards outside tv shows like this uh, having a specific day for it and uh, supporting people who will go outside to create awareness to the public and uh, also money is important in that aspect you have to motivate people to do that and uh, financially so i would like you to advise the general public on how to stay safe from hepatitis uh, use condom avoid sharing sharp objects Avoid using over-the-counter medications that is not doctor prescribed and get tested to know your status. Get tested. That's very important. Because if you don't if you know your status, if you are not infected, you will be more careful in your future doings. And if you are already infected, it can easily be managed. You will be monitored by the people who are specialists in that field. And uh, and live a healthy life. Thank you so much, sir. Just as we have heard from the medical practitioner, we should try as much as possible to avoid all these things he has enumerated in order to stay safe from hepatitis as it is very dangerous to the human body. Well, till I meet you again next time, I am Angela Daku. This is where we'll draw an end to this episode. See you next time.